Hello my Sock Universe and welcome to the Serie A review. I left this one for last because I expect it to be the longest of the whole review video so I didn't want to stop the upload cycle. Hence Serie A is the last video for this week. And yeah, uh, it also makes sense because there's no midweek round. I think there's a little bit Coppa Italia going. I have told you. It, the tide is turning black and blue and this weekend really drove the nail into that coffin with Inter going top, Atalanta also getting up there and uh, the two dominators of the early part of the season looking really, really, really shaky. Uh, speaking of course of Napoli and my beloved Milan. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's maybe the big story in Serie A at this very, very moment up top. However, uh, you know, as always, in, always in every league and Serie A is the league that I definitely follow the closest. So I can get, uh, there are a few more subplots we had, of course, Genu um, the Genoese Derby, Sampdoria winning, and I decided, yeah, let's pull out the beautiful Sampdoria shirt from 94, 95, 99, 95, 96, something like, like that. Uh, it's, it's an absolute beauty. And then, yeah, there's, of course, another uh, team that we didn't hear from a long time, but that actually might make it into Europe and will come to that one as well. I think we'll go it more or less game by game and then uh, we'll see the overall storylines. Uh, the Derby della Lanterna was all Sampdoria in many ways. Uh, Gabbiadini already getting it uh, early, uh, started the Caputo. I mean, there, there was a chance for Genoa here, here, here and there, but uh, Genoa are uh, a really wretched team at the moment. So, uh, I mean, the joke was that the best player for Genoa is Ek Ek, actually the coach in Shevchenko, and what a tough first uh, task to take on Genoa uh, for Shev 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 Shevchenko. I hope this will not tarnish his reputation going forward. Uh, and on goal then, it was 3-0 sometime to before Genoa got anything back. But I think this was a rather comfortable win. In one of the most atmospheric derbies in Italy, if not the... I mean, uh, I hear it uh, often and if you see highlights or just watch the game, this is really one of those derbies that is much overlooked but because it's always against relegation battle. But there's a, a real rivalry there uh yeah it's it seems to be, it seems to be a very very special game it's not the super hatred that we have between Lazio or the behind uh, Lazio and Roma the high drama of uh Inter Milan it's just a proper derby two teams going at each other so yeah uh that's fun Fiorentina uh 4-0 over Salernitana uh in itself maybe not the most impressive results and uh yeah Bonavent it took a while until they got the goal Bonaventura with a great shot gets it and then um, we had two Vlahovic goals of course. Vlahovic I think he's scored now way over 30 now in this season and this is, these are incredible numbers. I mean he has more than 50% of the offensive output of Fiorentina, a team that is mid-table. This guy is the real deal and at this moment I'm really wa wondering why we're still only disc uh, discussing Holland and Mbappé. I think Vlahovic deep belongs in that conversation. Absolutely, and the only reason why he's not uh, in that conversation because he's only playing for a team like Fiorentina, where Rocco Comiso really is trying to build some something. Uh, it's it reminds me a little bit of um, Don Quixote's fight against the windmills because uh, the <laughs> the Italian bureaucracy, especially in a city like Florence, they uh, he cannot get anything really going at the moment. Fiorentina is not. Uh, it is a nice tourist destination, but it's not the destination for soccer players at the moment. Um, Sotil, I think, gets the fourth one. But uh, to me, I think with Vlaovic up top, Fiorentina might well challenge, at least for Europa League, potentially even Champions League spots. Because I want... I don't necessarily trust that the top four at the moment will remain the top four. In a way, they would all be uh, classed higher than Fiorentina, but Fiorentina has been taking points from them. And if they can keep Vlaovic uh, and he keeps scoring out of his mind, I think there's something there. Also with Vincenzo Italiano, they have a very good coach, forward-looking coach. I think they made smart higher high, high there. Uh, the question is, can Vlaovic stay fit? But at the moment, he has been staying fit and he seems to be in great, great physical shape. Now then there's the other thing. I mean, Vlahovic already said he's not going to renew his contract, which got him a little bit in trouble with the Ultras. Uh, he's not celebrating with the, in front of the Ultra Cup because he's not allowed to. 
Italy. Uh, in so uh, that's ra rather weird. And uh, so the question is, do you cash in on Vlaovic now, where you can can get at least 80 million? I think you should even ask for for, uh, for more. Uh, and you get enough money to maybe invest in other players and deepen your squad. On the other side, you lose a whole lot of goals. So this is the, I, I, again, I think with Vlaovic, Fiorentina can challenge for a Champions League spot. And it would be great to see Laviola back there. I absolutely would, lo would love it. For me, Fior Fiorentina is a team that totally should be in there. Absolutely, 100%, 100 should always be in within the top uh, teams and I would love to see it. So yeah, uh, that's the big one. So do you keep him? Do you sell him? Ah, it's really, really nice stuff. The two big ones with Juve and Milan are very similar games. I mean, Juve had the lead uh, just at the moment where you thought nothing is really happening happen for them. Uh, Pellegrini plays it to Morata who kind of backheels it in. A, a really sneaky goal. But then uh, Venezia who themselves didn't play all, all well get an equalizer through Aramu and yeah, Kind of uh, petering out a, a little bit. It was a rather disappointing game overall. Great atmosphere though, but uh, it was overall a disappointing game. Can't say the same thing about Udin and Milan. Milan, I think for at least six minutes, did not show up. They, they, they just did not show up. There was no shot on goal until very, very late. I actually think that the goal by Ibra, the equalizer, was... Um, was the first shot on goal or something like, like that? I mean, absolute maddening statistic. Um, whenever you start back Yoko, he is just a disaster. And I know that the first time he was a mean, he was also initially a disaster. And then he turned re re really good. So maybe that's where they are relying on. But, you know, I know Milan is missing Leao. Brahim Diaz is missing a little bit of a foil there. Calabria is a big miss. But... This was a very, very disappointing performance and I actually think Milan will be limping now. I mean, there are two more games until the Christmas break. Uh, maybe one you could win, that would be all right. I think it's all down to the transfer window and I am not so happy about that because, you know, you need to have a squad built before a season that you can then a little bit adjust. Yes, Kier is also a big miss. Um, it just, at the moment, Milan is not good. But, you know, maybe this is now the one slump in the season that every team seems to have. Maybe I try to look at it like glass half full, but it's yeah, so and so. Uh, black and blue teams, Atalanta... Despite being a goal down and despite having the disappointment of uh, losing to Villarreal, uh, can get a win at, at, at Verona. But uh, Giovanni Simeone, another goal. This guy is also playing a little bit out of, of his mind. But then Miranchuk and uh, Kopmeiners with a, a deflected goal get the win for Atalanta. Uh, Napoli shock loss against Empoli. But I want to... Yes. They don't look all that great at the moment. Uh, similar to Milan, very, very similar. Uh, also having with Osimhen a big in, in injury. And in addition, they have the damp Thursday Sunday schedule, which is really not good. Um, however, you had the chances against Empoli, and but Empoli is a good team. Empoli at the moment is a really good team. And uh, see the goal. Ang Anguissa uh, tries to head a core corner and heads it onto Kudron in. It's a ping pong goal in, of the uh, best order. And yeah, uh, big win. And at that moment, when I saw that, that was in, 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 together with Lazio losing to Sassuolo. So Lazio, I don't think it's a factor this season. They're also a team. That's a big mess. I thought, hmm, Milan might have gotten away this round. In a big way, uh, just snatching the draw, and then yeah, but we have to see Inter and Inter completely rolled over Caleri, four nil, and the best keeper, uh, uh, the best player was the keeper for Calca Caleri, who uh, really saved them a route. Uh, Lautaro misses another pen penalty. I just don't get why Chalanoglu is clicking so much with Inter, but he is playing out of his mind, and Inter at the moment is the best team in Italy. Is it a momentary, momentary phase? I think they are a rather complete team. They are the one team where I think uh, they have the options. And that's rather remarkable because I know especially Milan fans were all hoping, yeah, Inter's going to fall apart now. No, they actually seem to play better now than they have been playing under Conte, at least at the same stage of the season. So uh, Inter, a big, big, for me... At the moment, I don't see anything but Inter. And this hurts really because they will get the second star. And I want to pip them to that as Milan fan. But, you know, 
it will eventually happen. But yeah, uh, it does hurt a teeny bit, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, uh, Inter, best team in, in, in the league. They deserve all the accolades. Uh, they got a little bit hard done by the Champions League draw to be honest, playing Liverpool. But they are, it, it's actually fun to watch them. If you take yourself away from all the rivalry, and that says a whole lot. And then Roma Spezia is the game that never ceases to amaze. It, it, there should be nothing. I mean, the, the, what's between those? Uh, and yeah, this time it was a rather clear uh, Roma win. Smalling, uh, Gaelic adding the first for first goal, the first first half, missing many chances. Um, uh, Ivanez then the second one after very two assists. A uh, uh, goal for Spezia was disallowed, but then uh, in the, at the end, uh, rather weird. I mean, there was also a penalty given before the halftime. Uh, it should have been a penalty given, but then the referee blew the whistle and no one is looking at it again. So, uh, rather weird scenes there. And then uh, Fena Jan, the guy with the sneakers that Mourinho bought him, uh, scores a goal. However, he uses his hand. He's celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The goal is chalked, chalked off, and he gets a second yellow in his send off. I mean, from the highest of highs to the lowest, low, lowest of lows, you could see how uh, Mourinho was not very happy with that one. So, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, lo loads of fun in Serie A. Uh, maybe not if you're Milan, Napoli, or Juve fan at the moment, and that, uh, those are already three big teams. Um, just looking at the upcoming fixtures, we have Atalanta, Roma, uh, Inter will probably roll over Salernitana, the way thing, things are going. Fiorentina, Sassuolo, a very interesting time, and of course the big one on Sunday evening between Milan and Napoli. Two teams in trouble. And I'm a little bit nervous ahead of this game, but sometimes against Napoli, Milan sometimes tries to get something, but uh, we gotta see overall. So that was it for me. It was a shorter video than I thought, but in any case, uh, please, any comments that you have, drop them below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!